Welcome to the LAPUX podcast, where we feature practical insights on how to lead with authenticity and courage in a changing world. This podcast is part of a growing collection of conversations with thought leaders in the corporate and nonprofit world who exemplify Christ-centered leadership. These thought leaders influence and contribute to meaningful professional development opportunities that seed our growing list of certificates and digital badges designed by our award-winning team who create world-class learning experiences that put humanity back into learning. Join us today in this journey to innovate and show the world what agile learning can be. Hello, listeners. Welcome, and thank you for taking the time to listen in for this podcast episode from our series, Resilient Leaders in a VUCA World. I'm Alexandria Mills, and I have the privilege and honor of talking to our president here at Los Angeles Pacific University, Dr. John Reynolds. In the last few podcasts, you have heard John facilitating conversations with corporate and nonprofit leaders on leading with authenticity, vision, clarity, and agility. And today we will get to hear and glean from all his wonderful expertise on the topic of strategic thinking. Well, thank you, John, for speaking with us today. It's my pleasure. One of my favorite subjects. Thank you. Definitely, John. So this series has really been about how leadership has changed for resilient leaders and disruptive or VUCA times. If we are in a disruptive environment, how can organizations be strategic? Yeah, that's a great question. And something that every organization is asking. So if you think about if you put together a strategic plan, in January 2020, how different that was in April 2020. If you think about putting a strategic plan, especially if you're a European company, in January 2022, how different that is in April, May 2022. So many organizations are saying, why be strategic? And I think it gets down to what your definition of a strategy is. And it's one of these words that's been used uh, more, you know, we have a strategic future for the organization or strategic that I get a gallon of milk this evening, otherwise I won't have my tea. You know, and so strategy should be kind of this very loose word. And I think, let me give you three options. I think strategic is when you actually look at your own context in a much larger context, organization within the context of work. Strategic is um, what you stay focused on. Often strategies actually help you to make a decision on what to say no to, because uh, there's so many opportunities. So being strategic is focusing on the few things that you need to do. And I think strategic, and um, certainly over the last four or five years, has been when to adapt, when to be agile, and when to change. And so I think if we take the definition of strategy being staying in the big context, staying focused, and being intentionally agile, it's still relevant to be strategic. All right. You can do that in any situation. I think we need to be strategic as leaders. And then we need to be strategic as organizations. And that's much more complicated because you need to create a culture of what it means to be focused and to stay in the big context. So, uh, yeah, I think it's as important as it's ever been. So as leaders and organizations, we're more familiar with the term strategic planning. Is there a difference from strategic thinking? And, and if so, how so? You know, strategic plan has been around since the 90s, late 80s as a formal process in most organizations. But it really has been an event. So if you think about strategic planners, you know, the organizations, once every three, five, 10 years, depending on the organization, uh, there's a retreat for all the um, uh, senior leaders in the organization. They go off to a nice place in Hawaii or something, uh, spend three days, bring the tablet off the mountain, and this is what we're going to do for the next three years. Everybody puts it into a nice binder. There's a huge celebration Say this is our strategic plan. Everybody takes the binder and they put it on the shelf. And so we have strategic plans on the shelf or commonly called spots. And nobody looks at it again until the next three years. And so what the key though is that it's an event. You do it and then nothing happens and then you do it and nothing happens. Strategic thinking is when you do this all the time, when it's a process that you're continually scanning the environment. It's a bit like we see in the airport or something when you see the, the scanner going around looking for where the planes are. You continue scanning the environment and saying, what do I need to, do I need to stay focused on what we are doing right now? Uh, do I need to be agile? So it's an ongoing process. So I think the, the biggest difference is a plan is a more codified event-driven deal. Really important as long as you keep on adapting the plan on a regular basis. And it's really important for the community because people want to know there is a plan. We're not just sitting every day as leaders making our decisions saying, I wonder what we should do next week. But what's more important is that there's a, it's a continuity and an ongoing process. So great question. And um, 
we need both. It's a mindset. Like you were saying, it's, the, it's a different than an event. The event sounds amazing to go to Hawaii and to be able to spend <laughs> yeah. that time to, to look ahead. But like you said, I, I love the fact that it's a mindset of something to continually think about and adopt. So what do you believe are the most important attributes for us as leaders to develop personally and also within our organization so that it promotes strategic thinking? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's implicit in many, many leaders, but I, still, I also think it's something that can be developed. I think the first thing, when I think about a strategic leader, they, a strategic person, because I think we need to be careful, everybody's a leader, right? By definition, everybody leads something. If it's not your own life, <laughs> could be leading an organization, could be leading a, a group, or leading a team, everybody's leading at some stage and what they're doing. The first thing I normally see is that they have intellectual curiosity. Um, these are the people who go down bunny trails every time they get into Google or something like that. They just want to know more, right? And so if somebody says something, they're busy on the side, they're trying to work out, what can I find out about this? There's just a, a curiosity that they have that is, it's a passion. It's just something that's natural to them. I think they also, at the same time, they know how to balance um, being curious and discovering new stuff by being focused. They know what the end result is. And so they always come back to it saying is, how does this relate to what I want to do or does it change something? Um, and so they have this balance. I think the uh, a third attribute or characteristic would be that they're agile. They're not, not afraid to change direction if they think there's good evidence to make it happen and it helps them achieve the goal they want to, to achieve. Um, they're, they're agile in making that happen. I also find that they're really good in thinking through future scenarios. A strategic thinker is always saying there's not only one, one way to see this end. There are a couple of scenarios. And what I'll do is while I'm discovering with my intellectual curiosity, new information, some of these scenarios will become more definitive than others. And so that will actually kind of put them to the front, <laughs> the front of the list versus the back of the list. So there's, there's certainly a scenario thinking that they tend to be externally focused. Um, they know what they need to do internally. At the same time, they're always looking outside for new ideas. And when I think of all the strategic thinkers, um, leaders in the world, generally they had really great ideas that have come from even outside the industry because they're busy reading about other things. And so they bring that to it. Very open to change. They always want to learn. And I'd say probably, I mean, the list could go on and on, but the last one that I, I can think of as a common, uh, common attribute is they have a, a, what I call a, a nice way of questioning the status quo. And they challenge the status quo, and which no leader likes to have anybody you know, challenge them, but at least we, we'll put it into fancy terms and we'll call it you know, constructive discovery. They want to discover um, how to actually change things um, through in a constructive way. And really, there's no, there's no malice in what they're doing. They're just saying the status quo is not always acceptable. Let's see how we can get into the next era. And again, the strategic thinkers, they're balancing it because they're looking outside, they've been discovering, they're learning. So it's not just like, I just want to upset <laughs> upset somebody today. There, there's, there's logic to what they want to do. So um, there's lots of attributes, but I'd say those are probably the key ones that I, I would see in, in most strategic thinkers. Like you said, as a leader, we can all have these attributes. It's not something that the president or CEO has. It's something that we can all cultivate at every level of the organization. And you can benefit your own de department or your own area of influence by having these attributes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, there's no degrees in strategic thinking, right? You can't go in, or there's no training or certifications and diplomas. So I think the, the challenge to us is actually how do we make it a natural part of what we're doing? And some of us, for some of us who are more systematic and more INTJ, and this is how it's got to be, um, how do we make that happen? So. I'm a very systematic person, but what I intentionally do is I have reading time every week where I read The Economist, I read the HBR, and I read other magazines, and I start to look for trends and say, oh, that's interesting. Um, next week, you see it coming back up again. Okay, so I'm starting to see something externally that might influence us internally in how we think and how we do it. So it is something that can be developed and uh, some people are more natural than others, but there's nothing to stop anybody from uh, being curious, learning and moving on. Yes. So I know you talked about some of the resources and some of the things that you do personally. Would you have any step-by-step -step plans for leaders to help cultivate it even more within themselves? Anytime strategic thinkers, strategic planners, strategic leaders 
I think we forget sometimes that strategy is the how we get to a goal, right? It's not the goal. The goal is not the strategy. And I think for strategic thinking, clarity about what the goal is, is the, the key. So as important as all the strategies are to achieve the goal, <laughs> um, so clarity in the goal, because that then starts to focus your thinking on, I can think of a lot of things. I can be intellectually curious about a lot of things. But the things I want to focus on is what is going to get us to that particular goal that we have as an organization or as a person. So clear goals um, for you as a leader, for you as your organization, clear context. What context are we living in? What is going to impact us being successful in achieving the goals or our strategies and making that happen and doing that in a, on a continual basis? The third piece I would say is, and especially when it comes to agility, and we're familiar now with scrums and tribes and all the other terms that we're using with agility is, I think the organizations are rethinking the way they organize to have decision-making democratized. It's more of a democracy in terms of how it happens with clarity. And so the, you can see why it's so important to have clear, a clear goal, clear strategies and clear context, because if people are making decisions, Everybody's got to know that's the flag on the hill. That, that's where we're going. And everybody has the same flag on the hill, then you can make decisions because you keep them aligned with how do I get to the flag on the hill? Um, they may not, and you can then you can start to actually, as I say, democratize and move those things down. And then I think the, the other piece that I'm seeing, and I think it's especially true in disruptive times, is we've got to be able to prioritize, and then mitigate against the things that we can't do. We can't do everything. Uh, resources, you know, economics, whatever it is. And so the ability to actually prioritize of all the things we, we can do or should do, how do we do that? So I um, think prioritization and then keeping people aligned. Um, people have got to know what's going on. Uh, communication, if we said before in leadership and management, how important communication is, it's become even more important. So it's, not much of a recipe, clear goal, uh, making sure you know where you're going, making sure you know having the right context, um, being able to broaden the decision making uh, for people to be agile, um, knowing that having priority, um, having people aligned. And perhaps the last thing just to is that I know a lot of organizations who strategize well and forget how to execute. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of good things out there on, on paper and they have great strategies. But execution, it just doesn't, doesn't happen. So you've got to pull these th two things together. I had two sisters and my mother used to do all the um, seams dressing for the ballet stuff. And she would spend a lot of time getting the seams together, right? You could bring the seams together. And it's the same thing for organizations. And if we think of the acronym SEAM, we've got to have strategy, we've got to have execution, we've got to have accountability, and we've got to have measurement. And those four things would help to make an organization come together to be more effective. Hopefully those would be some steps and some thoughts that leaders might be able to use. I think those are really helpful, John, because it really is important if an organization is going to create a strategy that they can execute it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then be able to change it. I think that's the other part, the courage. You know, We haven't spoken about it, but the courage to change it because often we get so enamored with our great strategy and how are we going to do it. And we know we have to change it because the context has changed, but it's such a good strategy. I mean, I mean, we spend such a lot of time getting the strategy. And so I think the courage to actually say, look, as good as it was X months ago, X years ago, we, we need to, to make that happen. So yeah, courage. Definitely. So John, this has just been such a great conversation and I'm learning so much. And I, and I hope our listeners are just soaking up everything as well. Do you have any final thoughts or experiences or even stories you would like to share on why strategic thinking is important in disruptive times? Yeah. One of my favorite books is by an author called Ram Charan. He's written several books, but the one I'm thinking of is The Attacker's Advantage. And he starts his first chapter saying, the leader's role is planning for uncertainty. And you think about that. Well, how do you plan for uncertainty? And he says, the problem is you don't know what's around the corner. And the world is always something around the corner. And we've really experienced that in the last five years, many times over the last decade, but certainly in the last five years, um, we've experienced that. And so I think one of the responses um, to uncertainty is actually to think strategically, saying, okay, what is the context? How do I stay focused? What's important in terms of what I'm doing? So I think it's actually a framework and a tool that can be used for any leader, any time in any organization. Well, thank you, John, again, for your time and 
just you sharing all your wonderful information, stories, and all your knowledge. You are more than welcome. Thank you. So listeners, please tune in to the next episode. It will be EQ and Empathy with Dr. Mark Stanton. And if you would like to read more on this topic, please visit our blog and you will be able to see the link in the show notes. Thank you for listening to this episode of the LAPUX podcast. We sincerely hope you enjoyed learning something new today and that you have at least one takeaway to use immediately in your professional life. Please take a few seconds to review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening. We value your feedback so highly because we're doing this for you. Please also subscribe to this podcast where we will be providing you with leadership training and resources as we hear from more Christian leaders from all over the world. Connect with us on social media so we can journey by learning together. All of our channels are listed in the show description. Before you go, we want to invite you to visit x.lapu.edu to see the courses that we've created for you. Check back often as we are always developing new offerings. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, we're here to help you become a better you. So check out x.lapu.edu.